culture by definition changes. Culture is organic. It emerges from the way that people interact with each other and the way that they give meaning to events, objects, um, and life situations. So I never would expect culture to stay the same. I think culture, culture changes in response to environmental shifts. And it's, culture shapes things like the economy, culture shapes the environment, it certainly shapes our interaction with the environment and the economy. Um, but those macro level forces are going to influence how we need to interact with each other. The, 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 the wonderful nature of diversity of cultures to say, actually, there is more to life than me and I can learn through those differences. And that, that's how we learn. We learn by being challenged, we learn by experiencing new things and, and that's the joy of life. That's the joy, that's the intense joy which is about saying actually I'm not just this and I can be something else. And through our relationship to difference we understand ourselves, we, we start to appreciate what it is that, about ourselves that we like, we start to understand ourselves. Uh, one of the things we learned in the meaning framework that we, the meaning model that we created is that core meanings are universal for all people around the world and this is actually a, a really stable place from which to design because um, our values are based on the prioritization and expression of these core meanings. Geographic culture I think is something that is inescapable. Um, it's something that we share, you know, we're in the same room regardless of our culture. You, you know, the two of you have different cultural background to me, but we share, we now share this space. So there's a sort of geographic um, alliance and shared interest. You know, if this room was to flood, if there's a hurricane in Brighton here today. We all, regardless of our particular peculiarities, we all share that. We have irrational cultural um, choices around materials, for example. Um, Sebastian Conran, I'm, I'm told, says it uses the example of um, a cup, uh, a china cup. A china cup is probably the worst thing in the world uh, to make a drinking vessel out of, which is from China. It's brittle, it's damaging, it's heavy. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it breaks every design rule if you're starting from scratch. Um, but can you get people to drink out of plastic cups? It doesn't taste the same, does it? Because it's, <laughs> it's emotionally, we feel that way. Designers are trying to understand culture as an identity sometimes, and it is wrong because identity is something that you put on it. I mean, nothing has identity. You put an identity on it. It's really important not to label things as this is culture and this is not culture. Everything is a function of some social system. The problem I have, or the question I have about culture, is the quality of our connections and the quality of the cultures we build. I think a lot of these kind of modern technologies, um, where it looks at one level as if you're meeting face to face, but you're not really, actually, they're, lo they're basically low bandwidth forms of communication. And with that, you get a particular form of culture. You get a culture that's a bit like having a text message argument with people. You can only, you know, it's difficult. You only get a certain, you know, very key bits of information. And actually, I think that has, that doesn't necessarily make for a healthy, dynamic, growing culture. I think it's a good start, but actually for, for my definition of a healthy culture is one where there's very high quality and depth of interactions. I'm not sure that um, cultures really can be constructed to be global or I think there is a kind of locality, something that's shared, that's local to the personality or um, to the um, geographic position of a, of a person. During the last 40 years, we've had a shift in culture where we value the individual. It was about how you look, how you feel, how you progress and as an individual, which at the beginning made us happy, but we have realized that more individualistic things and products and objects doesn't, don't make us uh, as happy as things such as connect, connecting to our social groups, connecting to the family, the family link, terribly important, 
the linguist friends, the linguist, uh, the social group, the people who think on your terms. We have to make sure there's, there's enough uh, cultural exchange, respecting values and respecting history and respecting, uh, um, you know, differences. I think we have to celebrate diversity, not, not just to try to generate a monoculture. We often make the mistake that, um, that we project our own views and thoughts and beliefs onto the outside world um, and expect others to reflect those back. Um, and and we, tend to, you know, we tend to build communities around ourselves that tend to be self-supporting. So we have to understand and engage more greatly with the, with, with the culture and what society's uh, saying it wants and, and listening properly. And work within communities that have that physical connection link between them uh, as a mechanism to, uh, to help them envisage the future in a way that is much more about them, about things they're interested in and things they want to do and how they want to progress and survive and sustain themselves and be conserved and be resilient. I have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that people can detect quality and integrity. What I would like to see is move away from that need to say this is me and I am this island to saying this is us. I think it's going to be a, a shift back to that uh, model uh, and, um, enabled by internet, enabled by mobile phones and enabled by other forms of, of, of communications where we will value more the sustainable longer term relationships that give you the satisfaction rather than the individualistic um, short term gains by, by products.